Well, hello. Um, we're in my garage and workshop at the moment, where over the last three years, a bit more than three years, I've been constructing my new virtual pipe organ console, known as Opus 2. Um, actually, it's the fourth such console I've built, either partially or fully. Um, but two of them have been for other people. Two of them have been for me. Um, some of you will have watched my videos um, on Opus 1, which I constructed between 2007, 2007 and 2008. Uh, and I made some introductory videos on YouTube about that, and they've received, I think, a couple of hundred thousand views between them. So that's good. This is Opus 2. And ever since I completed Opus 1, there were facilities on that organ that I definitely wanted. And so, in my brain, the design for a new uh, virtual pipe organ slowly uh, took shape. And then three years ago, 2017, I started construction of this beast. Um, it's a wonderful instrument. It's now finished, really. But um, it's taken three, three years and two months because every time I finish it, I find something else that I'd quite like. But I think I've come to the conclusion of it now. And very shortly, it will be moving up into my music room. But for the moment, it's housed here where it was built. Now, um, the design uh, for this is entirely mine. So if you don't like the look of it, it's my fault. <laughs> Um, and all of the building is mine as well, with the exception of the fact that I commissioned a chappie in Italy um, to build the key keyboard stack for me, um, because my skills didn't quite uh, go as far as that. Uh, the keyboard stack is a rather wonderful cherry and ebony keyboard stack in the style of the Baroque, with full length key sticks, so it probably feels quite like a tracker organ. I play two tracker organs myself quite regularly. Um, you can't completely imitate this, the uh, tracker touch with you know, artificial mechanisms. This one's got magnets and so on in it, but it's not bad. Uh, and he also built for me the pedal organ, which is a 30 note concave radiating uh, keyboard, which um, I did specify to him how I wanted it, he improved on some aspects of my specification. For example, uh, the way he's built in the reed uh, switches is rather better than my um, previous uh, uh, pedal board that I had on Opus 1. Um, but, that, but there were a few kind of funnies, um, because um, it's not quite RCO compliant, or for our friends across the, the, uh, the across the uh, Atlantic Ocean. It's not quite AGO compliant. Of course, you will know that AGO and RCO are as near as identical as they can be, because in 1905, the AGO, American Guild of Organists, actually accepted the Royal College of Organists' um, ideas uh, and took them unto themselves. And of course, now that one is more famous than the original. Um, the, uh, the Royal College of Organists in, um, in the UK here actually don't claim to um, be prescriptive about the design of pedal boards, but they did publish some, um, some details um, and they're available on my website. However, let's get back to this organ. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the bench out of the way so that the first parts that I can show you will be the pedal board, the expression pedals and toe pistons. So I'll do that, okay? Okay, we've um, moved the, uh, the bench uh, from its position over the pedal board, and now we can have a look a bit more closely at what, what we've got there. So you can see here, 30 note concave radiating pedal board. Um, you can see we've got two expression pedals um, 
as is typical in a Hauptwerk installation, we can assign the pedals um, either as an expression pedal uh, on a solo division or a swell division um, or any other division, in fact on two divisions at once if we want to, and normally then I assign the um, right hand pedal uh, to a crescendo if there is one in the organ uh, that uh, is being loaded at the time. We can also see that above the pedal board we've actually got uh, two sets of three uh, toe pistons. Um, these are illuminated so that we are reminded of which, which ones are active at any given time. Uh, and the sixth one actually isn't an, um, uh, doesn't doesn't uh, produce any registrations. What that does is it acts as a pedal cancel. So I've just cancelled that. Now. You can see. Okay, so that's the um, the pedal board. Let's have a look at some of the components a bit higher up. You can see we have an LED music mic, and then we've got a nice big. Uh, music desk uh, with um, music stays attached and this music desk is big enough to hold four sheets of Fools Cat music. Um, that of course is for people who play the organ properly because although I do read I'm not a very good music reader. I have to kind of learn the piece and, uh, 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 and I, I can't read all the three staves at the same time. <laughs> Some of you will know that. Uh, but anyway it's there and as with Opus 1, which was played by quite a number of excellent organists, this um, organ has already been played by uh, several sidelists who have visited during its construction. Um, so um, those who need full scat music, they can have it. It's there. Okay. Below the music desk, We've got a control console. Um, it's got a lot of traditional features that you'd find on a reasonably well-appointed real pipe organ. Uh, for example, it's got 16 couplers here. Um, it's, uh, it's got indications to show us the extent of the um, left and right expression pedals. As you can see, um, in this case, you might be able to read that, but I'll show you later if you can't. Um, here we've got the, the left pedal is allocated to the swell and the right pedal is allocated to the crescendo. gives us that information. So those are kind of fairly typical. And means over on the left hand side there, means of turning the organ on and off. But um, with a virtual pipe organ you've got um, additional uh, features that are required. Because most people who have a virtual pipe organ have rather more than one virtual organ installed. So I've got about 38 or 40 I think. Not all of them are large and and especially notable but several of them are very notable indeed and therefore um, you want a facility to be able to select the organ that you're going to play. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment but that's over there on the left hand side. Okay and uh, we've got a, a screen to show us what's going on and I'll explain that. You can also use that screen and these four buttons down here for selecting your particular combination set because you can have 32 different accounts um, and each account can have um, uh, it's a, a, a set of, um, of combinations and also a set of stepper registrations. Uh, there's up to a th there's a thousand available stepper registrations. I'll go through that later on but those who know how to work will know that already. So that enables you to select the organ that you're going to play. It enables you to select whatever combination set you want to play with it and then thirdly it also allows you to select uh, uh, different temperaments if different temperaments are actually available for this particular organ. Um, then over on the right hand side here I've also I've already referred to the fact that we've got um, the detail of the extent of of the uh, depression of the swell and the crescendo pedals. 
we've also got the means of navigating the 1000 um, stepper registrations that we've got uh, so we can move up or down in hundreds up or down in tens typical though people will know that's available as a help that function so there's no need to refer to the uh, the, the, the touch screen um, there's, you could do that entirely by buttons um, the normal idea is that when you're setting up the registration or determining your initial registration starting point you will use that uh, that facility of moving through hundreds or tens to where you want to be and then once you're there you can transfer the that's called the queued registration and you can transfer that queued registration to the current registration and you'll see here that we've got the step and the current displayed I'll show you that again later on but when it comes to playing and moving in ones and ones through your uh, registration as you play the piece then you have got um, um, a registration plus and a registration minus down here which is convenient when you're playing this is really only for setting up and for setting the starting point so that's the control console and I've worked for a long time on that and this is the, the fifth version of it um, people who saw the um, the organ when it was just about ready playable when we took it to um, to Bristol um, will uh, notice the difference because we've got two nice colour screens on there and we've also got a, a, a rather more complete set of facilities because not only have we got all this registration stuff but we can also start and stop um, uh, audio recording and MIDI recording and we can do those simultaneously if we like and then we've also got a button for turning them off and then right on the far right hand side here we've got headphone volume control and a headphone stereo socket so if you're trying to play and you don't want to disturb people you can put the headphones on and uh, play whatever you want and nobody will, will mind now that's the central control console very very useful feature it looks complicated but if you're reasonably familiar with how it work you will immediately recognize the functions that it's designed to carry out Let's um, just briefly have a look at the, uh, the free manual keyboard stack. Like I've said to you, these keys are um, uh, wood, they're cherry and ebony, and uh, it's a 61 key keyboard, so it slightly does break the Baroque tradition. Um, in that sense, it's modern, but in the design of it, we've got it to look like a traditional keyboard. But it's got some, of course, more modern features as well, because um, what we normally do is uh, the upper manual here, if there is a swell division in the organ, that's what it would normally play. But it can also play the solo division as well. So we actually have presets for three, uh, um, three divisions down here. Okay, the swell, the great, and the choir. But we've got a... Um, a set of registrations for a fourth division which would be in many organs would be the solo uh, so we, are, we can still use the solo organ individually with its own registrations if we wish and then we've got ten general um, uh, com uh, general combinations here general pistons uh, and we've got a general cancel and each division has a divisional cancel as well now um, one of the things that I've spent a really long time on is this issue that we have with Hauptwerk organs, the issue um, of um, uh, how you deal with having different organs which have different um, uh, specifications, different stops, different number of divisions with different names uh, and with stops in different orders and uh, not just international naming, different uh, naming in different languages and different traditions, but even if you have two similar organs by the same builder, they won't have the same specification. So how do you deal with that? Well, I've spent a long time on that, and I've actually constructed what you can see here um, on each side, two stop jams. These stop jams have ordinary um, um, uh, uh, press 
illuminated switches to control the stops normally. But um, as well as that, they've got uh, these electronic labels um, between each pair of stops. Uh, here's a pair of stops. Between each pair of stops, we've got an electronic label and it carries, the label carries the, the stop text for the two stops that are on each side of it. Um, there is a div dividing line, so it should be quite clear. Also, the software that manages all this formats and justifies the text so that uh, uh, that, for example, you can't read that from here, but it says um, it's uh, an eight-foot trumpet, and that's justified to the right indicating that in these, this double column of, of stop switches, uh, that one is controlled by the right, and the one above it is, is justified to the left, indicating that it's controlled by the stop switch, which is on the left. Um, ahead of each of these um, double columns of stops, uh, we have a divisional label. There it says Organ Division Choir, organ division rate. Um, this organ, which is the Hereford, has uh, four manuals and pedals, so we actually only need five columns of stops for it, and so we can reserve um, some of the other stops in this column here, we can reserve them for some of the, for some of the other functions, many of the other functions. What I'll do now, I'm going to um, uh, just zoom in on some of the features so that you'll actually be able to read and see uh, a, a little bit more clearly the nature of the displays and the nature of the facilities that are on the organ. And we're going to start with the left and right displays on the control console and then we'll go to the left and right stop jams. Thanks. Let's start with the left side of the control console. First of all, you can see that we've got a security key switch so that we can uh, remove that key when we don't want the organ to be played or when we've, uh, there's, there's no one around or if we wish to, um, to ensure that it, it doesn't get turned on. So we've got a security key switch. And then we've got a, a mains illuminated rocker switch here. That particular one, it says audio and MIDI. And when you switch that on, it switches on the MIDI devices um, uh, and the, the speaker system, the audio system. Both of those are turned on. Um, of course, we've got a lot of MIDI stuff going on between the control console and the stop jams and everything else that, uh, that, that, that is in the organ. Um, the second rocker switch here it turns the power on to the PC. And there's an advantage in having a separate PC switch um, from uh, just turning everything on at once because MIDI devices uh, do often take a little while to initialise um, and it's better to have them initialised before you turn the PC on. Because in fact, in this organ, we've got um, a whole host of Arduino and PJRC microcontrollers to handle the functions. Um, for example, each stop jam has got uh, an Arduino DUA in it. Uh, in the control console, there's, an RG, there's a PJRC Teensy 4.1. In the, the, uh, um, organ, uh, the, the key stack, keyboard stack, we've got an Arduino Mega R3, uh, which also controls the illuminated um, thumb pistons. And then in the uh, pedal board, we have got um, an Arduino Nano, and the Arduino Nano not only handles the pedal board, but it also handles the expression switches, uh, sorry, the expression pedals, which actually are very good and well designed because they use Hall effect magnetic sensors, which means there's nothing mechanical to wear out or become damaged or whatever, because everybody knows one of the problems with using potentiometers in particular as the control for uh, expression pedals, they do have a tendency to wear out. So um, there we are. Um, so let's carry on uh, along here. Um, 
After, uh, after we've got the, the, the key switch and the two main switches, you'll notice that there is an illuminated button there. If we press that, it will shut Halpvert down gracefully, including giving you the opportunity to save any unsaved settings. And then it will switch the PC off as well, so the organ can be shut down in one simple operation by pressing that button. I won't do that now. It does say computer off on the button, which you may not be able to read very clearly. Let's turn our attention now to the display and to these four buttons. Uh, on the left here, this button says organ or combination set or temperament, which this is the means of selecting which organ you're going to load and then having loaded an organ, which combination set you wish to use. And also, if you want to vary the temperament, uh, then you can do that as well with this button. Selecting, so are you, are you talking about loading the organ? Are you talking about loading a combination set? Or are you talking about loading the temperament? All that's done with that button. And then we've got a means of moving through whichever you want to load with this previous and next button. And then finally, having decided and settled on which one you want, uh, then you press that button to load the selected. And I'll show you that later on. But whilst it's loading, that button will illuminate to tell you that that's going on. And at the same time, the third line, line three here on the display, will show you the, ink, the, the percentage increment as it loads, which normally you see on the screen, but it's handy to have it just straight in front of you so you, you, you uh, don't need to worry about looking at uh, any other screen. We're looking straight ahead all the time. Um, this display here, um, you can see that there's two lines in red. These are the lines where the data changes according to what's going on. So line three um, shows you what is actually loaded. Um, so that says Hereford 67 because that is indeed the organ we've got loaded at the moment. Um, the fourth line shows you what would be loaded if you were to press the load button. Now, of course, we've just loaded the Hereford, so it, sh it shows us the Hereford, because that's where we were when we pressed that button. That's called the queued line, and that's the current line. Okay, It's very easy to use and, uh, and quite effective. So let's move along to the centre now, and we'll discuss the uh, briefly the couplers. That well, we're there. now looking at the centre of the control section, and we can see that on each of these illuminated locker tabs, we've got the name of the, the division, um, which is the target division. So um, we can press that, it says great, and below that it says to pedal. So we can couple great or the choir or the swell or the solo to the pedal. Then next we move along here and we get to the choir. So the choir uh, is, uh, is, is going to be um, gain the facilities of the swell um, division if we press that and you can see there um, and so on and we go up through the great through the swell and then we've also got the facilities here to add octaves. These um, MIDI-driven um, illuminated rocker tabs are readily available. They are actually from uh, MIDI Organ Works and they're very good. They work very, very nicely. I could do with more than 16, but um, I don't think I could accommodate more than 16. So that's the rocker tabs. We'll move along now and have a look at the right-hand side of the control section and you can see the facilities that that offers. OK, here's the, uh, the right-hand side of the control section. And uh, in detail now you can see um, these six uh, buttons that are here. Uh, these are the buttons for managing um, the setting up of a range of stepped reg registrations and also for starting the registration from a particular point when you're going to play a particular piece of music and you've got the registrations stored ready for you there. So you can see you can move up through um, the registrations 100 at a time 
And if we look at there, at the queued section of the second line, and I press that, you can see that it goes up, right, and down, likewise, there. Um, and also we can move through the tens as well. Um, so there we are. And then, having got a set, a setup on the uh, 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 queued, if we then press queued, it will then change the step, current step, to the queued step. And if there are registrations set up there, they will be used. And um, uh, if, if there aren't, if we're setting them up, we can start the setup from there. Because there is a seventh button here that you can see, and you can probably read it, it says stepper set. So if we press that, it will illuminate. Uh, and when that's illuminated, we can set up registrations and then we can uh, set them up um, uh, in the individual uh, step locations. If we want to go, to back, back, go back to zero, we've got a zero setting there. Let's press that and now we've zeroed the stepper current step and the cube step as well. So that's the management of the step registrations. Um, the, 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 over on the far right here, we've got the audio bits and pieces. So we've got, we can, we've got a button here, which you can see, uh, it says record audio. If we press that, that will illuminate, and we are now recording audio, although we're not playing anything. If we press the second one down, then what will happen is we will um, we'll start MIDI recording. And you'll notice that when we started the MIDI recording, you probably heard the noise, um, that uh, the the um, all the pre all, all the um, current registration that we might have had was cancelled, and we would be expected to set up the registration before we start to play because it's in the nature of the MIDI recording that it actually does uh, uh, record the details of your registration changes as well. So it zeroes them before it starts to record. When we've finished our recording, we can press record off and we've then got our MIDI and, and our audio recording. And then right over here on the far right, you can see we've got a volume control for the headphones uh, and we've got um, a stereo headphone socket, uh, which has got a, got a plug in it there and it, we've got the, um, the headphones connected. So that's the detail of the um, uh, central control console. So you can see all that we can do with it. It does mean that you can set, the or set up the organ, choose the organ, choose the temperament, choose the combination uh, set, choose the registrations, move through your re uh, stepper registrations if you wish, all without reference to a touch screen or any other fiddling like that. Because one thing I found, I had touch screens on Opus 1 uh, and I also had two uh, Novation launch pads, but I found that the touch screens didn't give us enough haptic feedback. They weren't always 100% uh, comfortable, uh, easy to use, and sometimes it's quite easy to miss Q press on the um, on the touch. So there we are. That's the central console section. Now what we're going to do is zoom in on the keyboard stack and just have a look at the one or two of the details of that. OK, well, we're looking at the keyboard stack now. Um, actually, there's not a lot more to say than I've already said, but you can have a look at, uh, at it in a little bit more detail, a little bit closer. Um, for example, you can see that we've got divisional thumb pistons, and you'll notice that they're illuminated, and then each one has a cancel. OK, we've also got a set of general uh, thumb pistons here, and they are also illuminated. And then we have a general cancel there, which cancels everything. Um, general cancel also sets the um, uh, any re uh, saved registrations on the thumb, on the toe pistons as well. So uh, so we have nice set of um, of.
combination pistons available to us. The action of this is a little bit noisy. Sorry, we've got the reason we got that was because we've got the the um, crescendo pedal open. So it's slightly noisy, but then you see actually tracker organs aren't silent, are they? That, you know, there's a certain um, there's a certain tactile feedback to that with the noises. Um, so that is the, um, the, the keyboard stack. One of the most important parts of the organ, of course. Um, but when all is said and done, um, apart from appearance and beauty and uh, the, um, the effectiveness of their function, um, uh, and this is highly effective and very nice to play, um, I don't think there's very much else I want to say about that. So I'm going to move on now to look at the two stop jams. Starting with the left hand stop jam, the first thing to note is that we do actually have a touchscreen monitor, a very small one, at the base of the left hand stop jam. Um, it's not really necessary to have a uh, touchscreen monitor or any monitor at all on this organ. Uh, but of course, sometimes you want to make a change to a configuration and using use the Hauptwerk menu structure, which is not really available um, and hardly suitable most of the time uh, to control all of those menu functions with dedicated uh, switches on a control console. So you do need occasional um, operation uh, of the, uh, the main Hauptwerk screen. But in this organ, it's very rare. It's only for details of setting up and for preparing the text for the various uh, functions that light up the colour display on the control console and the monochrome displays on the stop jams. So um, there is the uh, touchscreen monitor. It's very small. I think it's a nine inch screen or something like that. And, but it, it's perfect for starting up the computer um, and for making sure how work is working. Um, uh, before you then transfer your attention to the main control console and you start to play the organ. So let's have a closer look at the um, stop jams, starting with the left hand one. You can see that um, these um, stop jams, the front panel of the stop jams, uh, are built on an acrylic uh, panel. And uh, we've got uh, uh, apertures cut in this uh, panel, uh, which were cut by laser cutter, um, so that we can fit the um, uh, OLED electronic displays uh, into the panel. And across the top, we've got three um, at the top of the columns, uh, three um, OLED displays. Uh, on the far left on this organ um, is the control for the swell division stops. Um, in the centre is the organ pedal division. And then on the right hand side of the left hand stop, uh, you can quite easily read organ division solo. And then in the centre there, right at the top, it tells us which, what the actual organ is, Hereford Cathedral, England. Um, if we have a look at the way that the stop labels are displayed, you can see here, very legible, if the uh, camera will focus, <laughs> very clear. Um, we've, got the, we've got a number, 41 and 42. We've got the name of the stop, trumpet, and we've got the um, pitch of the, of the stop, 8 foot. And we've got enough room to include really the text of the longest names really that one could expect to encounter. The first number which appears there is really just for our help in setting the thing up. That is actually the OLED identity um, where the text is going to be displayed. And the odd numbers will be displayed at the top and the even numbers will be displayed at the bottom the odd numbers being for the left for the right hand switch and the even numbers being for the left hand switch 
And we've got, you can see here, we've got enough stops, uh, capacity here, really, for the largest organs, because we've got, um, we've got six rows of ten switches. So we can have 60 switches on each stop jam uh, and 60 stop labels. That's enough for the largest organs. Um, I mentioned that we had a host of Arduino microcontrollers in this, um, uh, this organ, and we have. Inside the stop jam, uh, apart from having a MIDI encoder and a MIDI decoder for dealing with the switch functions and the um, LEDs that are in the switches, we've also got an Arduino DUE uh, microcontroller which handles the MIDI output from Houtwerk uh, and chooses which um, electronic display particular bit of text is to go to and carries out the switching and so on and sends the data uh, to, that, um, uh, to that particular display and um, uh, the software uh, works out whether it's going to the top or the bottom of the display, whether it's for the right hand or the left hand um, column of switches. And uh, uh, it works very nicely. They load up a full organ using virtually all of those stops. The, the text takes less than a second to, uh, to load, so it doesn't add any de delay. It does take a little bit of tedium, <laughs> I'm afraid, um, to uh, load the text into Outwork. Um, because uh, you've got to type all the text in and you've got to type the, um, the, the details and then you've also got to give it the identity of the LCD which is what those numbers are where it says 41 let's just zoom in again and, sit and have a look closer look at some of them let's have a look at some different ones this time there we are uh, those numbers, 47 and 48, that you can see, we've got uh, a 15th at 2 foot, which is 47, that's the switch on the right, and then on, we've got 48, we've got a 3 rank mixture, 17, 19 and 22, that's controlled by the switch on the left. Um, those numbers, 47 and 48, are the LCD ID numbers uh, that are uh, essential in Houtwerk for telling uh, the system, in this case the Arduino DUE, where to write the text. In other words, which display. And um, because um, uh, OLEDs do take up quite a lot of space on the display, I, 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 I started out using uh, one display for each stop, but that made for rather large stop jams. And these are much more in keeping with normal size and I've used um, OLEDs and divided the space on each OLED screen to uh, handle a text of two stop jams. So that works very, very well indeed. But you don't have to use just the stop jam just for text to do with the stops. Because if we now transfer our attention over from the uh, left-hand stop jam, if we turn our attention to the right-hand stop jam, I'd like to show you a few things about that. Of course, on the right, we don't have um, a, um, a, a touch screen, um, so there's nothing to show you there, but I am going to show you what we've got across the top and also how we've got that, how we've got those set up. Uh, once again, it reminds us that we're looking at the Hereford Cathedral and it's in England. Um, we have a choir division in the, in the left-hand um, columns of stop jams and the great division uh, in the uh, middle and then um, ahead at the top of the uh, right hand double column of switches and labels we don't have a, a sixth division in the Hereford organ so we can use those stops for anything we like um, we don't have to stick to actual stop late, stop text so we're using there, we're doubling up on the audio and MIDI recording buttons, you can see, so that we can choose um, to press those if we want to do audio or MIDI recording instead of the buttons that I showed you on the um, uh, central control console. Because people may know that um, in Houtwerk you have two potential um, 
uh, devices, physical devices, physical switches or pistons or whatever, for each function. So uh, one of them is allocated to the control console switches, and the second one is is uh, uh, allocated to that spare column of um, of, of, of buttons. And uh, likewise, we also at the bottom of the organ uh, of the at the bottom of the stop jam, we um, I'll show you this. Bring it in to focus a bit. If I can get the camera to focus. There we are. We use. We, we use um, duplicated couplets as well, because sometimes it may be more convenient for the organist to press um, a button on a stop jam um, near to where he may be working, um, uh, rather than one of the central controls on the, um, one of these controls here, on the central control console. So, there we are. We have looked now pretty well at most of the facilities on the organ. We've um, had a look at, um, at the pedal board. We've had a look at the keyboard and its combination, uh, th its, its uh, thumb pistons. We've had a look at the central console and its controls and the two stop jams.